up. All right, so I'm a little annoyed. I'm pissed off. Uh, but that's Luthery. We want to show you that even I mess up and uh, show you how to fix it, which is in the end. That's what makes it good Luthery. It's, 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 it's probably I, a good thing. I thought, yeah, it was probably a good thing, yeah. <laughs> My name's Chris, behind the camera. Matt, as always. Looking good in his overalls today, too. Thanks. I'm I feeling wasn't, good, too. Yeah, you know? I'm feeling good, like I should. Yeah, I wasn't, overall, I think today is a pretty good day. <laughs> I didn't get the memo about overall day, and we'll decide about it maybe tomorrow. I'll bring There's my... an email and everything. Check your spam folder. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we are finally, in this episode, going to put the arm bevel veneer on this bad boy with this beautiful, nice maple veneer that I just made. Uh, and it's pretty much gonna be done. I still gotta glue on the, the treble side, um, but we're not gonna do that on camera because you've seen it uh, three other times. Uh, but before we dive deeper into this episode, I do wanna mention, for those of you guys who are luthiers or budding luthiers, if you're interested in finding some tone wood, we have a new section of our website where we sell it, driftwoodguitars.com slash tone wood. Uh, not only do we have like things like quilted maples and the zircote you saw in a previous episode, we've got Brazilian rosewood, cocobolo, a lot more tone woods coming to uh, to the channel as well, uh, I think in the future. Um, we've got bridge blanks. We've even got those cool handles uh, for those of you that watched our Stu Mac video so that you can hang your electric guitar. So check that out. We do appreciate anybody who buys any of that stuff. Um, but with that, let's talk about what we need to do in this episode so and the last one we knocked all this down it looks super super good more importantly than that it actually feels super super good uh, like I said trust your hand not your eye and uh, and yeah it, it, it's I think it's ready to go so what I have done in the meantime is I went and took a piece of uh, flame maple that I have uh, we actually used this for a drop top for a title caster and it was left over from the resaw but it matched really well this is important right folks uh that our veneer is going to match the color tone of our binding that's already on the guitar uh maples can be more tricky uh than just about anything because some maples can be more pink uh more flesh toned uh some of them can be almost a uh, sugar white and you can get all the way into the browns with maple so you want to make sure that the veneer that you're going to use matches the binding that's on the guitar. So in my particular case, I have a drum sander, so I make my own veneers, which makes it really nice. If you are purchasing your veneers, uh, I would buy several different pieces just so that you can kind of, uh, you know, kind of hold them up against your binding and make sure that they match. If you're doing things like a, a maple, I'm sorry, if you're using things like a, an ebony binding, then that's pretty easy to color match. Rosewoods are a lot easier. Maple's definitely one of the more difficult ones to do, so of note um, for you guys. So what we need to do is now get this piece of wood stuck on here and blended perfectly so that you can't tell that it's a veneer, um, which can be tricky. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out how much of this wood we're gonna need to overlay on that. And obviously tracing this compound radius can be difficult, but this is where the uh, the little trick I learned back when I used to do sheet metal in the Air Force, uh, it pays off here. What I like to do, is to just take some painter's tape and we are going to rest this on here very carefully. Some of you may be onto what I'm doing already, but other ones of you are gonna see this and go, holy cow, why didn't I think of that? Because um, it's, it's really, I, I use this process throughout the shop all the time. We're gonna lay this on here. I'm wasting a lot of tape here, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> Where's on trees? I know. We go through some tape. We do. Here at the old driftwood guitars. There we go. All right. It always wants to get a little bit more tight and sprung here in the middle, which is a good indicator of what the veneer is going to want to do as well. So what we can do, that looks really good. I take a fresh razor blade and I'm going to, carefully cut this whole thing out along the edges. Another thing that you can do, if you don't want to do it this way, you can actually just take a pencil and rub it on here, and it's gonna reveal the outline of that. I, I like this method a little bit better. I'm gonna very, very carefully, with a brand new razor blade, 
being careful not to tear the tape and or gouge the top of your guitar. Which, this is also a very good practice example to make sure that this looks all really good. See, so check that out. It's revealed exactly what we wanted, which is really nice. Just the purfling is visible, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good, this is showing you what we're gonna be doing with our veneer. And if this looks really, really wrong right now, it's a good opportunity for you to get in there and fix it um, with, uh, you know, some more finessing with your sandpaper or your, uh, your rasps. Pss, pss, pss. <laughs> that's how you say it, plural. <laughs> <laughs> this one can be a little bit more complicated uh, to cut. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect, people. This is just gonna be a general guide uh, for what we need to cut out of our veneer blank. Close enough for government work. You should know. I should know. <laughs> you know that saying, uh, good enough for government work thing, uh, there's a reason why people who work for the government invented it. <laughs> it's very true. Just enough to get by. <laughs> Ensures uh, job security for the next day. All right, so we're just... You're just looking out for your coworkers. That's right. Think about it. It's patriotic. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what we can do now is we can remove this tape. Let me set this on top of here. Uh, let's remove it from this direction just so that it doesn't all come undone. Just be careful here you don't tear it because what we're left with is a beautiful outline of our arm bevel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this somewhere on here that I feel like is going to give me my nicest grain. We have really good flame over here on this side of it. It's flat sawn here in the middle. I don't necessarily like the look of it. It becomes a more like quarter sawn look over here. So what I'm going to do is get the bulk of my bevel inside this stuff here that I think looks really nice. I just, I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on it because I want to be able to move it around. Um, I think I kind of got it on the first try there though. That looks really nice to me. All that work to make a big tape smiley face. That's right. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take my razor blade. I, I usually keep one of these inside of here. Um, I made this little... It lives in this. So I take a razor blade, and I'm going to cut this out, but I'm going to cut it out proud of where it's at. Um, it's important that you show encouragement. Uh, <laughs> to the wood and that you show that, that it's proud. You're proud of it. It's doing good things in life. Validating. Validating, yeah. Uh, we all need it in life. Uh, so I'm going to go about a quarter inch out here. I mean, well, it's probably more than a quarter inch. Uh, that's okay. And we are going to do it like this. If you have a scroll saw, you could probably make this work. But it's veneer, so you just cut it with a razor blade. Now, I made this veneer myself, so it's a little thicker than if you were to buy veneer over the counter. It's taking a few more passes than it should, but I actually like the way that the little bit thicker veneer looks on here. Should be good. There's that. You say bye bye to the smiley face. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Boom! Got this, Travis. Make him wait for it. Okay. So, what we've got is a piece of veneer. I'm gonna leave the tape on. Leave the tape on, people. But we've got a piece here that's that's plenty plenty large enough. It's gonna it's gonna sit on here really nicely, uh, and it matches my uh, existing binding really nicely. So, people are going at home, going, how in the heck are you gonna glue that on there, right? Like, so you got to use clamps uh, or a vacuum bag. Uh, or what? Like, how are we going to do this? Matt knows. He's seen me do it before, right? He mm -hmm. knows. So I watched, once again, all of what I'm doing here, this arm bevel is the Kent Everett way of doing it. Um, I, I got his DVD set uh, probably 10 years ago. Maybe not that long ago. Anyway, that's how I learned how to do arm bevels. And I remember this part of the video, it blew my mind. Um, because so I don't really have much experience with veneers because um, I don't make like traditional furniture. Uh, I think that a lot of the times when you do veneer... I could, I'm totally speaking out of turn here, so I'm sure I'm saying something wrong, but a lot of times the veneer will actually have like a peel off 
backing on it and you can um, you can iron it on um, or you would actually put wood glue on there and then vacuum bag it and then get it to stick those are kind of the two ways that at least I was peripherally familiar with veneers but oh Kent showed this way of doing it and it blew my mind so what you want to use is tight bond or uh, like an Elmer's woodworking glue not the professional stuff not the outdoor stuff but the traditional yellow woodworking glue don't use the LMI stuff don't use anything else other than like a tight bond or an Elmer's woodworking glue, the original recipe, uh, now with more flavors and spices. <laughs> um, <laughs> and what we're going to do is we are going to apply this wood glue all to the surface of here, nice and, you know, we're going to put it in, rub it in by hand, and then we're going to flip this over and we're going to apply it to here. And then we're going to let it sit for an hour. I always set a timer. It goes for exactly an hour. We're not going to stick them together. This is going to dry. This is going to dry separately from one another. And then I'm going to take a household iron. And the moment you take that iron and you touch it to here, it instantly cures the glue and sticks them to sticks to it. It's absolutely the most magical thing ever. And I love it. It's like such a, a satisfying uh, second to peeling off the plastic off of an electronic device. Only second to that. We do love that. We do love that. Oh. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and apply this on here, and um, and we'll, we'll let her rip, tater chip. All right, um, so we're just going to apply this wood glue to the surface of here. I just got this scrap piece of koa uh, that we're going to put it on there. Uh, I do want to, once again... <laughs> I love... Yeah, like, you're, it's a, a, yeah, a beautiful piece of wood that you're using for a scraper. <laughs> you're not the boss of me. Uh, I do want to reiterate the importance of using non the non-outdoor professional stuff and the reason why I'm, I'm kind of harping on that a little bit is because if you do it the for some there's something in that stuff and ask me how i know uh that once it starts to cure it actually goes dark it like turns almost like a black and um it'll it'll create this really hard black outline around the edges of your veneer and it, it's it ruins it um uh and it doesn't stick as much as this stuff does once when you use the iron technique. I don't know why. Um, just do as I say. I've learned that lesson for you. <laughs> I was like in a pinch and I was like, oh, I'll just use this. This is fine. And it, I ended up messing it all up. So um, the trick here, and I don't think I'm going to use the spreader actually, is, is just getting this really nice and flat. You don't want this to uh, to be lumpy edge to edge, making sure that it's really good. And we're going to do the same thing here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use it on here. We're gonna get that nice and slathered on here. If you're using um, really thin veneers, be careful with this because it's gonna wanna curl up on you uh, because you're, in, you're introducing water essentially with the glue. Uh, so just be aware of that. If you set it aside somewhere to dry, uh, it might wanna curl up on itself <laughs> as one is to do. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it for right this second. What we're gonna do through the magic of television is come back in an hour um, and and be ready to go. But yeah, make sure that that's on there nice and good. Like I said, this one's not gonna curl up on me, but if this was a thinner one, it would wanna fold in and then it sticks to itself. So be careful with that. We will put this aside. We will insert a SpongeBob SquarePants one hour later uh, and be right back with you guys. Honestly, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm probably just gonna do a hard cut. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, through the magic of television, we're back. It's been exactly an hour, and I and I do want to know exactly an hour. Uh, this is one of those things that I actually stick strictly to. A few times I've tried to, to pull the trigger a little too early, like at the 45-minute mark. Didn't work very well, and I waited too long a few times, and that didn't work very well either. So it seems like the one-hour mark is the sweet spot. Um, so we have dry glue on the face of this. We've got dry glue on the face of this. But what I like to do is take a little bit of sandpaper and just very lightly knock down you inevitably get little little like fuzzies um so we're just gonna knock those down very very lightly that's about it that was literally about it same thing here knocking off some high spots looks good feels good and we are we have our iron heating up over here i'm gonna go ahead and pull our tape off we don't need that because that'll be a sticky mess um, but so I've got this iron going, it's blazing hot. That's, that's technical terms. I wouldn't want to bore you with it, <laughs> but blazing hot is how I normally do it. And we're going to start right over here. Being careful. You want to get this in the right spot before you commit. 
because what'll happen if you don't have it in the right spot is it's not going to lay on there correctly. <laughs> so I kind of move it around until we get it to where I know we're going to be copacetic. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, I think this is where we want it. So, primity. I know my hand's blocking it. Watch this. Watch this. This is a little bit thicker wood, like I said. There's probably some old timer woodworkers that are gonna be like, yeah, duh. <laughs> this is how you do it. But to me, this is like freaking magic. Freaking magic. Okay, so that's sticking. We're just gonna work ourselves around here. Should I clean this iron off at some point? It's like so. It's like gritty. <laughs> yeah. This can be very, very finicky. So just take your time. This is, I guess, that's the overarching message, right? Through this whole process, <laughs> take your dang time. Get it right. Something I didn't mention when I was cutting it out, but pay attention to where you lay this out, where you cut it, because like you can see my, I've got my flame inside this wood kind of going really nicely, so it's going to match the flame that's in uh, the binding over here. So just it's something to think about when you're selecting which part of the veneer to use as your uh, your your overlay. This can be kind of sketchy here, so I'm trying to get this into the waste. Don't crack it. Yeah, but it's coming around. I'm just going to carefully move this way, trying to not break it. If you spray water on this side, will it help it move? I'm scared I ain't going to do it. It'll work. It'll go. I'm going to stop right around there. Then I'm going to concentrate on this. I'm just getting a really good seal along the purfling edge. And I've said it a bunch, but my veneer is thicker than over the counter, so I'm just having to spend a little bit more time with my iron than you would with store bought veneer. If you haven't made your own veneer, I recommend if you have a drum sander, giving it a try. It's really fun. And uh, like I said, you're going to get a better match. So if so, in a previous video, we talked about making your own binding. So you can start making your own binding and then making your veneers out of that same exact wood and you'll get a perfect, perfect match. Okay, so I think we're good enough for right now. What I want to do next is the part where you can really start getting this all tied together. So a lot of the pressure that's being built up in this area is just because there's so much extra wood that's not needed. So what we need to do is start removing some of that wood. Okay. For the uninitiated, I would recommend doing most of this next step with, um, with sanding sticks versus a chisel or a hand plane. The issue with the chisel is because we're going around at a radius like this and because you remember on our flat piece of veneer this thing was curved like a banana uh, is the grain changes direction inside this thing quite a few times and you can really get bad tear out and mess up um, basically as you go to shave this down it'll go and just rip out a giant chunk of your veneer so you just really want to be careful you kind of eliminate that scariness if you do this with a coarse um, bit of sandpaper uh, stuck on something straight like this and you could just sand it down you can also use if you're using the same technique that i had your um your sander um with like a 60 grit and just knock it down that way very slowly and carefully so it's just there's a couple of ways to do it some of them can be a little bit more fast i um, see like suddenly the grain changes directions right there well no it's gonna let me do it somewhat but yeah there you go see now it wants to crack mm -hmm. as we come through this way so it's that's the kind of thing that can happen. I'm fine. It's not into it there, but it's fine over here. We're actually on the end grain almost. It's just a lot of pressure you're putting on the wood by doing it this way. Um, so you can alleviate a lot of it just by sticking with sandpaper. 
That's what I'm actually gonna do. Cause I don't wanna screw this up on camera. <laughs> fix our issue here real quick. Never angle your chisel at yourself. <laughs> I just want to preemptively break that so that it doesn't fracture further. Alright. Saved. I'm going to switch over to a little bit finer sandpaper to do this top part. You can see it goes a lot slower that way than it would with a chisel, but it's safer. Um, we're way less likely to have any issues that way. Um, so we're going to stick with that technique, I think, especially since we're on camera. <laughs> this is one of these few steps on a guitar, uh, this gluing the veneer on part where like you actually get a chance to have a do-over. Um, and like I've had many time where I go to glue on my veneer and I mess up a spot here where it, like it doesn't line up right and you can chisel the veneer off and get a redo. There's not many steps on a guitar where you get to do that but I'm starting to get to the point where most of the time it works out the first try but it's a little bit extra pressure with you guys watching <laughs> so I'm trying to get it right. So I'm going to switch to 120 and we're going to hit this and get it right real quick. Alright, so let's show the folks that own that. That's what we're looking for right there. Looks pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got our veneer is coming right up to the edge of the purfling, and that's what you want across the whole thing. Um, so that's why we're taking our time getting it right because we have to get those to intersect correctly. Being very careful as we're sanding and we're chiseling that we're not going to break or tear this veneer. It's really easy to screw that part of it up. So I am going to continue to try to ride this way, removing a little bit of excess and gluing it down without breaking it. Um, it's, it's a mood, <laughs> as the kids say. Um, just very carefully applying pressure and we should be able to get in here now. Get that dust out of there if you have any dust. There we go. A little bit of heat. Never hurt nobody. Well, says the people who are burned. <laughs> He's hurt a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> say, why don't you touch an iron then? <laughs> but you can see how good this glue works, man. It just it's just freaking awesome. All of this extra material that's out here, though, it's wanting to, uh, it's really wanting to make it a lot of extra pressure on it. So I'm trying to remove it. I'm actually going to slide in here and come this way real quick. That's the safe direction for our grain. See, it's not sticking yet. It's still got a ways. So if I can relieve some of this pressure on it, it should stick better. Careful you don't gouge your top if you're going to use the chisel. Do not come, if it's not glued down yet like it is right here, don't go all the way to the edge. It ain't ready for it yet. Leave that 
there. Okay, I'm gonna switch right with the mat. I want to remove some of this now because it's, it's once again it's pressure that's inside the wood from all this excess. I'm just gonna hog off some of it. If you're using over-the-counter veneer, this is risky too because you can just crack. You can have a giant crack in your veneer. If you're not using sharp chisels. all that pressure all right it's just we're getting there it's just the process it is what it is so I'm gonna really try to get this glued in. This can always be one of the harder spots, obviously, to get to stick. Sometimes, sorry. Sometimes you just gotta gotta get it in there and then press and hold. Or even sometimes a little bit of super glue. Mm -hmm. A little super glue will do you good. I've had a, quite a few people who it's comment. You could use a curling iron right here. You, you know? could actually, right? Uh, I've had quite a few people who comment on they think that my arm bevels are ugly or too big, um, and that's fine. Uh, I actually kind of really like some of these smaller bevels that are out there now. Back in the day when I first started doing bevels, these were kind of the only way that people were doing them. Um, I've, these don't negatively affect the sound of the guitar enough that I feel like, you know, it's a big deal. Um, but I hear you. Yeah, <laughs> it's not for everybody's taste. Everything that we've done on this arm bevel can be can be changed and it's shaped to make it work to whatever you want. You don't have to do it as large as I'm doing it. And and, and you know I'm not. I don't blame you if you do. Uh, you do you. <laughs> so straight uh, sandpaper on flat surface here. Just gonna give us a nice. Just a little more heat in one little spot, and then we can focus our energies on the underside. It was, it probably took, I think, probably seven or eight bevels before I did my first one that I got it on the first try. Mm. This is like finish work. It's, it's the reason why this tends to not work on the first try is because you don't actually have that, the, um, the bevel that we cut into it perfectly flat, or it's not lined up really nicely with this purfling. Um, mm. That's why that is so important. So once again, let's go ahead and should give them a nice pan of that mat of that of where everything lines up. That's everything. Getting all that to line up so that it looks blended smoothly. I want this to look like binding, not like a veneer. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that at home, if you're watching this series, that it's starting to make sense on like why we did all the steps that we did on the front end. Uh, and so all we need to do now is I'm going to turn this on its side on the um, the vacuum clamp, and then we're going to blend this part and then we'll work on getting these two transition points and it should be good. It should be. Should be. There's only a small chance of screwing up left. Love that. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna go like this. Back and clamp for the win. I'm trying to find which direction the grain's going. Yeah. Now it's going good. Just be aware of that. You can see how the grain goes one way on this side and it goes another way on this side. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. I'm 
I'm not gonna go all the way to flush just yet because I want to hit this with an iron again just to make sure that we've got it the glue sealed all the way to the end it sounded worse than it was <laughs> we'll work on that this really is kind of one of the hardest veneer or valves to do is, is maple uh, so if you can do it with maple man you can do it with anything that may have just screwed up uh oh. We're gonna see. God. Did you go too far in? Yeah. It's because this wasn't ironed all the way down. I thought it was. Alright, so I'm a little annoyed. I'm pissed off. Uh, but that's Luthery, <laughs> in a nutshell. Um, and these are the sort of things that you don't know until you start to get this bevel on here. So we've got this looks really, really nice. Like that's exactly what we want, right? Let's get the light in there. Yeah, it looks good. That does not. <laughs> um, so that last chip off happened because I'm kind of frustrated. Like, But what was happening before then is this right here was starting to show. It's more yellow here, obviously, because it's got this dried yellow glue on it. And if we were to sand, we could get that smooth. But we don't want this binding to be revealed until right around here. Um, and I believe um, that the reason why this is happening on this one is because I, it's not. it's a little round. I really need to get it perfectly flat. Um, and I also think that my veneer is a little too thick. Um, so what we're going to need to do, oh, we also had a situation over here too, same thing. I've actually never had this happen before. And that tells me that I think that what, once again, we have is a situation with our veneer being too thick. Um, so I'm going to end up having to take all this veneer off. Pissed off? Yes, because we're hoping to get this episode in the bag, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but I think this is a really good opportunity for you guys at home to see that, like, even me, I've been doing this for 15 years. Uh, this is probably, like, my 30th arm bevel. Um, this happens. This is, And if it happens to me, it's probably going to happen to you. But the good news is, is there's actually a way of fixing all of this. Uh, it's going to require some work. Uh, and I believe that there's probably at least 50% of you at home who maybe are brave enough to try this arm bevel on your guitars who have come across the same problem and are going to need to fix yours as well. So I want to burn this guitar to the ground right now, and that's uh, pretty typical of Luthery, but we want to show you that even I mess up and uh, show you how to fix it, which is in the end. That's what makes a good Luthier. It's, 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 it's probably I, a good thing. I thought, yeah, it was probably a good thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought a good Luthier was made by uh, really, really nice tools. <laughs> I know, I was told wrong. Yeah, I was told wrong. But we will do that, and before we get into it, uh, just to give you a quick little teaser, what could have been? Ah. It <laughs> came out really nice. Mm -hmm. A little black standing in there from the ebony dust, but uh, uh, that's all going to go away. All right, so to be continued, right? TBD. Wait, to be continued. TBC. TBC. Okay. <laughs> 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 what is it? <laughs> <laughs> 